in this panel, making change happen. And we have two invited speakers that are trying to make change happen in different ways. So Eva Saldaña, she's director of Greenpeace Spain. And clearly they try to make <laughs> things change so that uh, we live, all of us, in a better planet. We are creatures of this planet. I mean, uh, it's not also only about animals. We humans are also living species, and we need the adequate environment. And then we have Antonio Espinosa de los Monteros, who's uh, CEO and becario, as he says, <laughs> from Aguara. It's a, a company that produces bottles of water, but with recycled PET. And it's a social uh, entrepreneurship as uh, they invest or donate uh, part of the funds they raise on... 100%. 100% of the dividends in social causes. So uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, chat that we're going to have. And our goal is to try and spark the minds of everyone that's here and when we think what is sustainability, to try and understand how big is really the word and what it implies, and try to uh, move away from the oversimplifications that we maybe uh, many times think of. So we thought that talking about bottles of water that some may think is sustainability, uh, was the, the, the right topic to uh, introduce how sustainability is complex and we need to understand both the social, environmental and the governance and economic uh, parts of it. So, uh, well, regarding plastics, let's start here. <laughs> What's happening with plastics <laughs> these <laughs> days? So the great topic, I don't know, Eva, if you want to start with the, the important messages. Uh... Mm. When I thank you very much, thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here and with you, with all of you, uh, online and offline. So first of all, uh, when I was coming, I was thinking, what, I, I could give you a lot of data, what is available. Um, many data is giving us the, the overview of what is happening around the world, what is totally crazy, but um, I wanted to tell you three stories, no? that maybe it's better to start with, with some stories before the data. Um, the first story is about my son. Uh, yeah, when, when you are a mom, you, the first thing that come up, come up is your son. No? And my son uh, is five years old, and he's always uh, very interesting to pick up some stones and leaves and things that are around. And we, we live in the mountains uh, in north of Madrid. Um, but she is always picking up all the time uh, small crystals, all kind of crystals, green, bla uh, black, white, all kind of crystals around in the ground. And he, he has this kind of uh, hobby <laughs> and finding all the time. We have a, an amount of crystals in our house. And it it's came to my mind and I start to think, wow, the children today pick up crystals, small, small crystals, <laughs> when they are playing. The, the second story is about when I was living in, in south of Patagonia. Um, I was doing a kind of research there, and I wanted to visit, it. of course, the very beautiful ecosystems where they have there. But um, I wanted also to visit what they call basurales. It's the, the big landfills uh, full of waste where the people is living there. There are people living in big amount of waste. They are trying to recycle different um, uh, packets, plastic, paper, different cartons, things. But, um, well, the things make me think a lot. No, People who are living there, people who are are growing there, no? They, they, um, they, it's the first thing that they see, it's a, a city, no? a village, in, inside, inside of this landfill of waste. And the third story is about these um, grand uh, paths of, um, well, the amount of uh, waste in the oceans, no? We have five paths uh, in the oceans uh, full of waste, um, is it because the, the cycles of the, of the oceans? 
Um, and yeah, it's unbelievable that we have these islands of waves in, in the middle of the oceans. No? It's big ones. Uh, some of them are bigger than, than some of the, the countries that we have around the world. So it's, it's like to, to understand the different many things that we, we have in front of us is a real uh, waste crisis, no? and, and I can say a kind of silent pandemic. We, we are producing three, uh, more than three million and a half of um, uh, plastics every year, and only the 9% of these plastics are recycling around the world. In, the, the, in, the, in developed countries, it's around 9%. No? It is the data that we have. So we have to imagine what is the, no, the problem that we, have, or we are facing and is in front of us and what we can do about that. No? Yeah, well, that's actually the big question. So what can we do with these plastics? Plastics, uh, on one hand, are helping us and have helped us evolve from uh, medicine. They are used as devices to having access to water wherever you are. Um, so I do think that we cannot um, just think of let's take away or let's remove plastics and think of other solutions. I know, Antonio, uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit of how plastic is recycled or the different alternatives there are. Yes, plastic uh, is not a good thing. Uh, okay, but <laughs> no, I would say uh, once I saw a person walking on the street with a bag that said "fuck plastic," mm. and it was like, "Who's plastic?" I mean, "fuck who?" Plastic has no personality. Has no. no it doesn't take actions freely. It's fuck people who don't recycle plastic. Fuck people who don't give a shit about environment. That's what, the problem is there. It's not, it's not a material itself. It's how we manage the material and how, what we do with it. So um, I think, I think we, we, can, we can start from a premise that is we have already produced more plastic than the humanity is going to need forever. So uh, I think it's like, why don't we start recycling it and reusing what it what already exists and needs to be managed and put our, again into economy. Because if not, if, if, the, if, if the waste has no uh, economic value, then it will end up in nature because nobody will care about it. So if we are able to turn it back and put it again into the economy, then it, um, it, it has some value again and somebody will take care of it and bring it again to the economy. So, um, in general, I think we should uh, start thinking that we uh, should stop producing more plastic. It's not necessary. Uh, we won't need more plastic produced. Uh, there's already plastic enough to be recycled for decades and for generations. And what we should focus on is new systems of recycling and new infrastructures for recycling. Because, um, as Eva said, uh, it's a drama how we're recycling today, even in Spain. Uh, depending on, on the source, you can, you can visit. The officials once say it's 75% around, but then Greenpeace has other data which are, is really interesting. It's like something around 25%, 25%. Yeah. So um, it, if, you, if you dig deeper on the 75%, then you find out that part of the part of the plastic that's considered recycled is just sent away to other countries, for example. So um, one of the things we were talking before is when we talk about sustainability, we have to dig very deep. So we have to be very technical about what we uh, say, what we think, how we take decisions. For instance, um, we are a social enterprise, so, uh, and we invest 100% of our profits in, in, social, uh, in, in water access projects in, in developing countries. But we decided we would fund our projects through selling products. And the first product was water. Why water? Because our, product, our projects are water projects as well. But the idea was we have to disrupt this market because uh, people are producing bottles that are uh, being very damaging, damaging for environment. Uh, and the, the whole idea was 
what does it mean to be sustainable? Then you have to, to think deeply on what, what's the meaning of sustainability in a, in a specific sector, in a specific market. And then for us, it, it had two, two vectors. The first is recyclability of the material. So you produce something that is going to be uh, recyclable again. Uh, and the second was uh, carbon footprint, uh, which is the other uh, metric that everyone uses to, to measure uh, non-visible impact. Um, and if you take those, if you take both of them, then you end up, for example, um, some companies or some events say, okay, let's not use plastic. That's cool. But then what do you do? So you bring <laughs> a, a can of water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, um, this can is made with a part of a percentage of recycled aluminum, which is cool. But then the process in terms of footprint to produce this is much higher than producing plastic and much hi even higher than producing recycled plastic bottles. So um, I think uh, regarding, for example, water, I think we should focus on having cool, good water, quality water accessible for anyone at home. And in those places where it's not accessible or it's not uh, uh, the market demands it, then let's, let's find good solutions. But let's not go to what's visual but has no deep sense behind it. Uh, and I think in, in sustainability, uh, it's a mistake we're making a lot. Yes, and, and it's also, uh, we talk about greenwashing, but uh, many times it's what people, the perceived value or what's perceived as good is basically because, as you were saying, they don't take so deep as they should. Um, I, I was thinking on regulations. I, I love the, the, this part, the, the framework in which we operate uh, defines clearly what is it that we can do or we can't. And, and we recently saw there was a new regulation on, on, on plastics in the supermarkets. That's great because, I mean, things are going to happen by 2023. We won't have food there. But what happens to all of the sectors that kind of are banned or will be banned somehow due to the new uh, 2030 agenda from the European Union. I mean, it's necessary to push this, and I think Greenpeace did a great job with uh, free uh, food from plastic, or how was it? The, uh, yeah. <laughs> free, plas yeah, free plastic, yeah. Yes, so, yeah, I, so I was thinking if you can analyze that part also, the interconnection. You know, you have to push the environmental part of it, uh, but also all the people uh, that are part of that pro the, mm. the economy. So yeah, um, before to go to, the, to there, I want to <laughs> remark so remark something. Um, I agree with you, but I, I think I want to to go before that. No, I, I agree with you. Like now we have amounts of, of plastic and what we are going to do with that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's clear that it's better to, to use that, no? to, do, to do something with that. But I, I wanted to, to say that it's very, very important to, to understand the materials that we are using. No? And, and if, we, um, if we wanted to, to really uh, continue with this buy, throw, buy again, uh, fast food, fast fashion, fast, no? like this life that is totally crazy, and, and how we can cut that, no? And what are the, the different paths that we, we can uh, take in account? Uh, so, but the material is very important, no? Because we are using materials that, that don't allow us to, to be in a cycle, in a natural cycle, where we can really um, involve that. We, we, uh, we call that the to cradle to cradle, no? It's like from, from uh, the beginning to, not to the end, that again in the cycle. So it is very important for us. No, it's it's only this this remark about the, the, the material. Absolutely agree. Absolutely um, agree. And it's very important for the new projects, uh, new entrepreneurs, new uh, no, uh, new ideas is to come up with these materials that can be in, in these cycles. No? And it's just to, to point uh, something here is when you see recyclable, 100% recyclable. Let's dig there because sometimes they say 100% recyclable, and, and it's. It means that you can recycle it into a laboratory, but it's not uh, industrially recyclable. And then there's one more point that you, you mentioned, which is recycling should be 
You turn a bottle into a bottle. You turn a, um, a fabric into a fabric. You turn whatever into what it used to be. If you recycle a bottle and you can only turn it into a soup product, that, that's down cycle. That's, that's a different thing. So you have to choose materials when you eco-design your products that are able to become again what they used to be in the, in the beginning. Yeah, it is because we are exporting the, pro the, um, the problem. No? Uh, for example, we can uh, have very new and ambitious laws in Europe. And later I'm going to talk about Spain. <laughs> but what happened when, when the waste is not coming here or, or staying here? No? It's going to before China, but when China banned that, then go to Indonesia or Mal Malaysia. And we have been following, from Greenpeace, we have been following a bottle no? and, and all the ways and see what happened with that when uh, Ecoembers, no? Ecoembers say it's, a, it's, a, it's who has to manage all that and say yes, 60% 60, 60 of the recycling, but it's not that because some of this part is going away. No? So it is very important to say, yeah, in some way we need to have really good laws, uh, people in movement, changing their lives, and, but what happened in other countries, no? And, and we have to keep in our mind that. And also we have to see that we are in a, a climate emergency. And, and we have numbers about plastic, no? We are talking about the 1.5 uh, degrees, which is the limit uh, the, the IPCC is t t telling us, okay, be careful because it's a red we are crossing a red line for the humanity, and if we cross the, this point five degrees, then we are, we are going to have really hard problems. We have seen that in, this summer no? with Alemania or Canada or different countries in, with different climate e events, so it's, it's really hard, and we are going to see that with more um, intensity in the following um, Climate years. events that affect people. <laughs> yeah, it's people, it's people. It, it, it's the, 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 the health of the planet is our health. So we have to keep in our mind, and the plastic is, is, is more or less in one year, it's like they are producing CO2 as 189 coal plants. So we are talking about climate also. It's not only waste, no? It's, there are things that we can see and it's very tangible, but there are things that are going and contributing to the global warming. So it, it's important to have that. So talking about the... Um, the laws and the things that are happening. I think uh, Spain is now um, discussing a lot, and our government is discussing a lot about the new law for waste management. And I think it's, it's like all the laws in general, no? it's very ambitious. In be, be, it's, uh, sorry, very, uh, <laughs> it's very little, um, little ambitious, no? with li very little un, un, un ambitious. So it's, it's when, when you cannot see the, the, the whole problem, and when you cannot uh, really um, advance, because there are a lot of pressure for, for different uh, companies, no? Uh, when we did this campaign about uh, plastic free uh, or, or free uh, plastic future, we, we were trying to involve all the citizens no? and trying to um, realize what, what was, what's happening around. No? Like my children picking up uh, small crystals, it was people uh, trying to clean different areas and different beaches and different uh, uh, mountains or wherever they want to, to do that and realizing what are the companies involved on, the, on, on that. No? What are the companies that are producing that and, mm. and there are single plastic use um, there, no? So, um, but Eva, I want to say something there. Uh, you know, when our minister Teresa Rivera said uh, with a new uh, law uh, that all of the, for example, diesel uh, vehicles would be banned, suddenly this caused like a roar in the sector and it was like, okay, this has to be made in an orderly fashion, no? And that's why she's yeah, also. Definitely. Yes, and, and not leaving anyone behind, and this has to be, yeah. yes, so that makes that laws should be more ambitious, no? But you but can't. But more realistic in the planification. In a transition, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sure, sure, sure. I think, uh, to, just to, to illustrate it, to me, sustainability needs to be the point of conjunction between three circles, which is people, planet, and economy, because if one of those don't work, then uh, any plan you make is, 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 is going to die on the way. Uh, you need to 
<laughs> support people, you need to support the planet, and you need to support economy. Because if, you, if one of those don't work, uh, I think plants don't ha have no future. Yeah, sure, I, I completely agree about that. But, but when we put a, a date, no, like uh, 2030 or 2050, uh, we have to think about the long-term goals, but also what, what is going to happen today. You know? yes. and, and this is the thing that is like a kind of, okay, let's see what happened in 2030, but today is not happening anything. That is the problem. No? So it's not, I'm not, I'm not saying that, of course, we have to do a planning and a transition and see if, if no one can be involved and, and no one can be <laughs> left behind. So, but, but what happened no, today? Because if not, we are not going to arrive to the 2030 uh, goals. I fully agree. So we've run out of time. I would like to leave uh, a message to take away, and it's a very quick message. And it's that each of you, uh, if you get informed, you can decide and make choices and make change happen. And activism is a great, uh, I mean, be an activist in whatever you do, because that's what pushes and presses society, governments, and companies to act differently. So something, thank you very much something, for being Something here. that we need to do all together. Yeah. Yes, that's it. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.